Red TRT Warriors coming at you with a, another video. Today, I want to talk about a TBI protocol and what you need to do if you've been in a traumatic event. Doesn't matter what the trauma is, it could be domestic violence, it could be a fall as a construction worker, it could have been in a car accident, it could be blown up from war. It really doesn't matter how it happened. One of the main aspects of TBI is that you have both primary and secondary effects. So in terms of an initial injury, when you go into an ER, ER docs only know how to do one thing, which is pump you full of drugs and get you into some sort of homeostasis. If there's cranial bleeding, solve the brain bleed, give you more morphine and drugs, and then uh, send you on your way. And usually what ends up happening is you're um, sent off to some nurse prac or family medicine person who you know, really doesn't know what to do, and uh, they're very unqualified to be treating this. And similarly as neurologists, because uh, neurologists, when they see someone that's presented with TBI, you know, if, even if you have slurring of speech, but then you don't have these other pathologies of or, you know, it, it issues that a neurologist would usually treat, they don't know what to do. Um, one of the main articles that I want to go through is a uh, neurosteroid treatment for traumatic brain injury by Dr. Mark Gordon. You know, he is the premier expert um, on this, um, and he you know, starts off by stating, you know, starting in uh, Startling three to five million Americans are living with traumatic brain injury. You know, current medicine has little to provide these patients, and it's you know very true. Um, so secondary effects. Um, you know, there's both primary and secondary injury. The primary injury occurs at the time of injury and is considered irreversible, which is completely false. However, complex secondary mechanisms crucially affect the delayed progression of brain damage, presenting unique opportunities for therapeutic strategies. One secondary process potentially promoting latent neural death is post-traumatic inflammation, which increases blood-brain barrier permeability, resulting in cerebral edema, intracranial pressure, and neuronal dysfunction. So, Right there, when we talk about TBI, we have to think of it in context. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a car accident or a uh, screaming argument uh, type of trauma, or there was a blast around you, um, or you were attacked by a dog. Doesn't matter what it is. It results in inflammation. There's going to be signs and signals in the blood work that say that there's going to be um, that inflammation and the job for acute therapy is one to get on board ketamine because ketamine uh, drops glutamate and it's going to drop the process of neuroinflammation and inflammation throughout the body. Um, if you can have a document on file with a you know a medical uh, practitioner where they're actually going to follow what you say, um, it's pretty important to have that where they understand you know give this person ketamine so that we're going to be able to drop the inflammation and stop the further degeneration in the brain. If you don't do that, none of the doctors are going to listen to you. Um, I specifically uh, tried to get this treatment um, in an ER after a TBI and they wouldn't hear it. Um, they were not um, receptive and didn't understand. Um, secondarily, another um, medication to add is uh, progesterone. Um, progesterone in acute um, TBI is very important, it serves the same purpose, drops the glutamate and inflammation in the brain, and allows the body to achieve uh, homeostasis. And that goes for men as well. So progesterone is in every um, you know, man or woman, and it's not a female hormone, it is a hormone in the body, and we may need more or less of it depending on uh, your gender or whatnot, but in, in general, um, it is in both, uh, both, treat, uh, both genders. Um, after that's done and you've uh, you dropped the inflammation, um, your next goal is to run through all of the 
uh, hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis from, in Greg Plummer speak, from the balls to the brain signals um, that are in the body. And so it is very important to then um, run the, uh, the blood to make sure that you are going to be able to test and uh, see everything. So you're going to want to get uh, a cytokine panel, um, which includes C-reactive protein. You're going to want your um, TSH for thyroid, because when you have um, any sort of damage to the body, the thyroid can be damaged as well. Um, you're going to want T3 and T4 um, in there, um, along with DHEA and running a, a cortisol panel, along with free testosterone. Doesn't matter what your total testosterone is at all. Total testosterone um, cannot be utilized for treatment. Um, it's something that basically gives you an idea, but it is not um, how we evaluate things. And so you want to have a free testosterone in there. Um, LCMS, if you can, uh, which is a some sort of fancy word that talks about things for the uh, labs and gives doctors a highly specific and specialized free testosterone number. Um, you're going to want that in there. Um, specifically, the day after or um, following weeks, you're going to want to get a glucagon stimulation test. When it comes to growth hormone and traumatic brain injury, traumatic brain injury patients or any person with suspected seizures or with um, neurology types of damage to the brain are not able to get a insulin tolerance test as well as the IGF-1 is not a specific number of what your growth hormone really is. So this is why traumatic brain injury patients have to get a glucagon simulation test, they'll inject you full of medicine, you stay there for a couple of hours, they draw a bunch of blood, comes back with your uh, growth hormone, and then you'll be able to get growth hormone uh, medication called somatropin or nortropin. These are uh, growth hormone uh, medications. Um, for traumatic brain injury patients um, in general, when it comes to growth hormone, because we're not going to be producing from the pituitary and hypothalamus these hormones, um, you have to get the hormones replaced uh, specifically with the exact drug itself. And you cannot use mimics or um, medications that are almost like uh, growth hormone, such as secretagog, peptide medications that are similar to growth hormone. They would pr help produce it, but you cannot take that as a traumatic brain injury patient. It's very important to get a glucagon simulation test. You can get that done from any endocrinologist. They're not willing to do it. You're going to want to find the doctor who is, so Dr. Mark Gordon, Dr. Uh, Brad Garner, Dr. Gabe Frank, um, Dr. Eric Fetty, and they will find a infusion center to get you a glucagon simulation test so that you can calculate what your number is and then get on um, that medication. Um, very specifically, this is a very complex topic because doctors are not allowed to prescribe growth hormone off-label, which almost every other medication, including heroin, um, you can or morphine, you can actually prescribe off-label, but growth hormone is not one of them. And um, you have to go through this whole rigmarole, even though it's already indicated um, for your illness, and uh, you need to have that replaced. Um, specifically, once these labs come back, our goal is not to say, oh, well, you look somewhat okay. Um, our goal with traumatic brain injury patients is to treat everyone as an individual. Anything that is not optimal needs to be replaced. So if your pregnant load is slightly low, if your thyroid is slightly low, if your testosterone or your estradiol or your um, progesterone um, or pregnenolone is slightly low, that needs to get replaced. Um, the goal with TBI treatment is to basically give you homeostasis. I don't care what the thing is or what the lab is. 
Um, if it's not optimal, if it's not how you're going to feel better, you need to get that replaced, period. I don't care what any endocrinologist says. Um, it can even be Dr. Uh, Morgenthaler himself. Um, if it's not optimal, it needs to be replaced, period. Because our goal is to keep people happy and alive and not dealing with the nonsense of, oh, hey, here's more psych pills, here's more lithium, here's more... Um, whatever psych medication they can throw at you because that does not solve the underlying condition. Um, after you've gotten these uh, hormones um, evaluated and the labs have come back, um, one of the main goals uh, after that as well is to get on board glutathione and glutathione injections because you want an injectable form of glutathione that is going to be able to get that up and regulated in the body and clean out all the bad stuff. Um, when you, uh, you drink a lot and you um, get hung over. What actually cleans out your body is glutathione level. That goes throughout the body and cleans things up. So one of our main jobs is to get glutathione um, in, into you in an injectable format. You know, whether you do that by IV or you do that through um, intermuscular injections or subcutaneous, um, your goal is to get that medication in use as fast as possible after a traumatic brain injury. Similarly with NAC, I'm not as familiar about how NAC technic, so NAC is the precursor to glutathione, and then that gets converted, and there's a process, I have to look this up, so NAC mechanism of action. Let's do it live. Uh... So I think it's cysteine, is then that what? is converted into glutathione. NAC, direct antioxidants, free group, mycoprotein complexes, something, something, antioxidant GSH precursor, which then goes to ROS scavenging to reduce oxidative stress, increase cellular glutathione creation, Improves mucus clearance. I don't know what that means. Sounds fancy. Um, reduces mucus secretion. And then, where's another? Yeah, this stuff's fancy. Um, okay, so it is cysteine that I'm thinking of. Okay. So basically, the, the two processes where you have the cysteine part and then you've got your glutathione part. Um, how does cysteine work then? CYS, cysteine mechanism of action. Yeah, I need to learn a little bit more of that. This has their like bio something something fancy science stuff. In any case, um, if the ER or whatever doctor can throw down NAC and IV, it's going to help you uh, be able to clear out the body. And then glutathione, uh, the injections or um, the IV. And then look around um, for the following weeks post uh, illness is to get a Myers cocktail or um, vitamin C IVs. Let's actually see what's in the Myers cocktail. I don't remember what's in the... Uh... Cocktail Ivy. What's in it? Ah, so it's magnesium, calcium, B vitamins, vitamin C. It is very important that you get these on board, specifically magnesium, because it also um, can cross the blood brain barrier and begin to start the healing process. Because our first goal was right to use ketamine, drop the inflammation, um, get the hormones evaluated, and then to, um, through outpatient infusion centers, um, you can look up any, you know, Myers cocktail, vitamin C, IV, near me. Go to any one of them, 
click on the button, go down there and get these uh, a, you know, a couple of times a week if you can, and then uh, once a week um, going forward, at least for that full month of, um, of trim, because your goal is to clean out the body as much as possible, and that vitamin D, vitamin C is going to be able to upregulate your immune system um, to be able to uh, heal things directly. And specifically, even if, um, say that you could say that this didn't necessarily work, um, vitamin C is used for cancer patients, and it literally reverses cancer. So um, throwing down IV vitamin C is the best possible thing that you could do, whether you had a flu or whether you had traumatic brain injury. Um, the primary goal is to um, utilize these um, medications and processes to then uh, end the inflammation process and uh, to allow the body to heal. Um, now, say you're a dude and your free testosterone comes back Ten or uh, twenty, something like that. Um, that's hypogonadal. If you look at a chart, um, and I'm using NGDL. So if you're using PGML, you just move the decimal over. So, but I use NGDL. It's just easier to talk about. So anything under twenty is hypogonadal. My opinion: anything under thirty or fifty is hypogonadal because you're not in an optimal state. Now. You can have no symptoms or whatnot, um, or you think you might have no symptoms um, below uh, the 50s, but my opinion is if you gave someone a trial of testosterone that day and they felt it uh, and appropriate um, uh, testosterone ester or it acted immediately, that person would immediately feel uh, what, that, what that sense is like, and they would know, okay, yeah, I feel like crap, and I didn't really realize you know, what I felt like. Um, so you want to immediately start with that as a foundation. Testosterone is the foundation of um, our hormonal processes. Tons of things work around it. One of the main things is, well, there's no necessary interactions that can happen with any other drugs or with uh, any other hormones, uh, technically, if you're a dude, um, and you're just taking uh, testosterone. And uh, the dosages that we start with is 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams you split that up uh, to twice weekly or more so you know half an ml um, uh, twice a week and then that is going to be able to give you a stable uh, framework uh, foundation to be able to work off of and then the doctor can work on thyroid and pregnenolone and progesterone and uh, cortisol medications and thyroid and growth hormone and that sort of thing but our main idea is that we build up and you only introduce one medication a week um, of, uh, of hormones, and you kind of go forth um, with it. Now, in terms of acute treatment, you could obviously throw um, pregnenolone and uh, progesterone immediately, and then, you know, after, then add uh, testosterone and, and other medications. But you do kind of want to go, go slow when it comes to adding um, medications all at one time. Um, in terms of the long-term process as well, um, vitamin D has to be on board um, to, you know, basically provide you that um, immune system modulation and uh, ability to heal. That's uh, one of our main goals. And, uh, you know, vitamin D provides that. Um, something I've been using is a new medica mycelized vitamin D. Um, it means it's water soluble, and uh, I don't process fat the right way, and so uh, I, all of the vitamin Ds I've tried doesn't really work. So something like that works really well for me personally. Um, and my understanding is the international units that we use is 10,000 IUs of uh, vitamin D per day. So um, that's what works for me personally. Um, I feel pretty good when I take it in the morning, and it's immediate kind of thing. So you actually do notice it uh, pretty well. So after that's done, um, and you've gone through your uh, ketamine uh, therapies, and um, you can even continue to get those uh, for the, the weeks going forward to then um, reverse any sort of depression of symptoms or reduce any inflammation. Um, and this also goes for um, any so physical injuries that you may have as well. So your hip got jacked up, your shoulders, your spine's pretty painful, your head, or you just have depressive symptoms or whatnot, um, or you feel like shit, um, ketamine can really help with that. Um, I will say I just had one a couple of weeks back. Um, I was not ready because I was on uh, pain management already, and the way that it works is pain meds work off of the NMDA receptor. 
I knew scientifically how it worked, but I did not realize how it worked in person. And so I get this IV, um, they hook me up, two seconds into it, I pass out. Um, I'm off in, in Wonderland. Um, wake up was pretty, uh, pretty strange. I don't really know how to explain it, but um, you basically go off and you... Uh, you process different things. There's a bunch of research papers you can read on it, but you basically uh, process depression and things like that and uh, kind of face your fears and then uh, you know, kind of feel better. And it provides a pain relief feeling as well, which is really good. Um, what I didn't understand physically, I understand the mental part of it, um, is that if you're on pain management, just know that your pain meds won't work for that day. <laughs> and so once that um, good feeling, analgesic effect, wears off, um, you plummet, and uh, it is like hitting a brick wall. So that was pretty difficult to go through for the first day and a half. Um, the day after, you know, completely wore off and whatnot, and uh, I didn't realize also how much pain that I was in with my spine, because I'm constantly in pain with it. And uh, ketamine immediately cut off all the pain. I was able to walk better, and and uh, was just feeling good. And uh, that was strange. Uh, I didn't really understand that. But ketamine really helped with that. And uh, just be aware if you're a pain management patient that you do need to know that. But it is very important. And you can add those in an outpatient um, clinic uh, place. Just know that you have to do price it and look around for different places because some of the prices can be ridiculous. Um, but you can do it um, you know, one, once a week or about, uh, five times a week or whatnot for tremendous amounts of pain. Um, personally, I, I only did the, the one time just because of the reactions that I've had since I'm on pain management. But it really does help, and it's an immediate feeling. Um, and uh, also, since it's on label for traumatic brain injury, you can get your insurance to cover it. Normally, they don't, but for traumatic brain injury, since it actually is indicated, you just have the doctor fill out, okay, on the on the script, you know, this is on label treatment for blah, 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 for traumatic brain injury, and they put that in there. And uh, then you can get reimbursed for it. Um, I don't know what happened to the VA. I have no idea if they have infusion centers set up to, to get this treatment. Um, probably not, but hey, it's you know, worth it to ask. Um, and you can get ketamine infusion therapy there. It is sedation. Just know that. So if you do do it, <laughs> know you got to bring a friend, you know, family members, and uh, you're going to be zonked out. But it really does help. Um, after you've done all this and you've optimized your hormones, um, you know, one thing to definitely be working on is diet. Anything you can do to reduce inflammation is the best thing possible. So I know that Dr. Mark Gordon specifically is not on board with the whole carnivore keto idea. My understanding is that because keto technically is a catabolic effect on the body, and there might be something with autophagy. I don't know. He's into some strange molecular biology kind of stuff. He's getting into processes and stuff like well beyond regular doctors get into. And I agree with him to one extent. So I'll say in his same context, doing modified keto is the best. Uh, modified paleo is the best idea. But we're doing lower carbohydrate in the you know 50s to you know 100s uh, level. But then we're having that. Um, uh, higher cholesterol. When we talk about higher cholesterol, the building blocks of pregnenolone, progesterone, testosterone, vitamin D is all cholesterol. And we need that to heal the body and we need those lipids to then heal the rest of the body as well. And part of that is then also adding fish oil. Um, there's been many studies where doctors in acute TBI are adding um, 5 mLs of fish oil which roughly, I'm going to get this wrong, but 5,000 milligrams or something like that of active EPA and DHA. I'd have to look at what the breakdowns are, but those are specific fats that you need um, that provide an antioxidant effect, an anti-inflammatory effect. So immediately acute treatment, adding um, that fish oil that's in there. And if you're a post-TBI patient, you know, doing the same thing on a daily basis of adding that 5 milligrams of fish oil to then provide you your anti-inflammatory effect. Um, this is very, very important in terms of the process. And if we cannot take 
Tylenol and Norco and morphine and you know all these drugs, you know, the better. Um, and now that we've gone through that piece, um, magnesium is very important, as I mentioned in the, the Myers cocktail. Um, what are all the things that magnesium does? Relaxing blood vessels, increase cerebral blood flow, um, reduces cerebral blood flow. Well, okay, so since brain injury reduces cerebral blood flow, taking magnesium may help with that. Okay, interesting. Um, oh, interesting. There's a paper on it from uh, NIH. So, use of magnesium in traumatic brain injury, depletion of magnesium, animal, and in the human brain after injury, secondary insults are observed in patients, TBI, adversely affect clinical outcome. We hypothesize the neuroprotective effects of magnesium in TBI patients could be absorbed by increasing its brain bioavailability with mannitol. Here we review the role of magnesium in the brain. And we conclude that the co-administration of magnesium mannitol with pharmacological physiological agents could be an effective neuroprotective regimen for the treatment TBI. So, you know, adding magnesium sounds like some fancy doctors doing it. What's this guy's, uh, Dr. S.C.N. and Dr. Gulati. Um, on, uh, what's the title? Use of magnesium in TBI on NIH. So, you know, adding magnesium is very important, and uh, my understanding is that magnesium L3 and 8 is the only magnesium that crosses the blood-brain barrier via oral administration. I don't know about IV. I would go on a limb here as well and say possibly that even IV doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, but I'm, I'm not 100% about that. Um, but it is pretty important to get magnesium on board as well, and that interacts with all sorts of things. I mean, we're talking about um, there's just so many different parts of the body that magnesium is responsible for. Um, and that part of the neuroprotective effects, one of the reasons why we take testosterone for TBI, doesn't matter which level is, if it's lower than 20, N, or in my opinion, lower than 50 NGDL, you need replacement. And part of that is upregulating estradiol, because we need estradiol to provide neuroprotective effects that protects the brain. Yes, men have estrogen. Yes, women have estrogen. And testosterone upregulates that. So the more that you got on board um, is going to help you in that process. Um, I think that's pretty much all that I want to go through today in terms of a kind of toolkit to give you to know what to do, which is go over it again, get your ketamine done immediately. If they won't do it, we're going to have to go to an outpatient clinic, get the ketamine infusion therapy done, because um, it can cross the blood-brain barrier and it's not going to cause any problems with anything else uh, that you may have related if there's no cranial bleeding, and um, then run all the hormone panels, make sure that all of your hormones are optimized, not just within a range, but feeling good and optimal and the best that it can possibly be. Um, then adding the vitamin C or My Myers cocktail IVs to then get that through your body, adding vitamin D, adding magnesium L3 and 8, and uh, even for men, adding progesterone as well to make sure that you have the neuroprotective effects along with pregnenolone because when one of these are off something else is going to be off so we want to also offset that with pregnenolone as well and then um, after you've got all of that squared away and then you've been doing um, IVs and you know adding glutathione to then clean out the body um, then going on to repair and uh, building up muscle mass um, you can then start utilizing uh, medications like oxandrolone anovar 
um, medication um, or nandrolone decanate, which both of these medications um, upregulate parts in the body and they're technically steroids. All that means in this case, um, even though you're not a burn patient, they give those to burn patients all the time and they help rebuild muscle and uh, rebuild um, parts of the body in which has happened in traumatic brain injury. You had catabolic effects and structures of the body. So it is on label and any doctor can uh, prescribe this medication um, to then help you to rebuild your body and to uh, heal um, parts of your body. And then after that, you're going to get your glucagon simulation test and make sure what your growth hormone levels are. Find out if they're um, even being produced at all and uh, immediately get that in the body. Your risk of death um, with lower amounts of growth hormone goes significantly higher the uh, lower that it is. So your main goal is to get those uh, hormones and processes in the body and then work on your diet to make sure that you're lowering your inflammatory foods and uh, making sure that you um, add fish oil and other cholesterols um, like butter um, or avocado to then have anti-inflammatory effects and then reducing um, crap oils like canola oil that are uh, carcinogenic and uh, elevate your triglycerides because our main goal is to lower triglycerides and upregulate HD, uh, HDL um, good fats in the body. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I will try to do my best link <laughs> some of the studies that I went through. Um, and uh, you can always reach out to me via the Facebook group, uh, TRT for Warriors there. And uh, stay safe and uh, use all effective means to reach optimization. As we know, Modern medicine focuses on sickness and sick care. It doesn't focus on functional medicine. And our goal is to optimize the entire body to be the best we could possibly be. Brad, out.